This is Craig with Karshalton Advisory, and in this video we're going to work through the practice task for Objective 3.2 of the Microsoft Office Specialist 2016 Study Guide for Microsoft Excel Expert Exam. Let's get started. So our first task is to open up the Expert 3.2 workbook. We'll double click it here. All right, now on the tax worksheet, we need to add a formula to cell B18 that uses the tax table in range C9 to F15 to look up the income entered into cell B17 and return the applicable tax rate. So we're going to use this as our lookup value and figure out based on this income what our tax rate is going to be over here. So what we need to do in cell B18 is add a V lookup formula. And the reason we know it's a VLOOKUP, all right, the reason we know it's a VLOOKUP is that the items that we're going to be searching are oriented vertically on our worksheet. If they were oriented left to right, we'd be using an HLOOKUP, which is what we're going to be doing with our next task. But for this one, let's work through this VLOOKUP formula. We'll take a quick look at its syntax. The first thing that we require is the lookup value. So this is the data that Excel is going to try and find in our table. So in this case, we want to use the value here in B17, this income line. Next is the table array. And you know typically that's going to be a table, meaning something that's laid out in the Excel worksheet. But you could actually enter an array into this part of the formula, where you'd actually type in all the numbers in this part of the formula, and Excel would look up into that. But 99% of the time, I think most users are going to use a table. In this case, our table is the range C9 through to F15. So we'll highlight that there. I'm going to F4 that to lock it in, just out of uh, habit. Next is the column index number. So that is after Excel has found this value, it's going to then go however many number of columns to the right of where it found its reference number. So in this case, what we want as an output is the tax rate, okay, which is this column here. And that is our, we're going to start with column one. So one, two, three, and four. So four is what we're going to enter into that column. Now the last term here is uh, is optional, and so it's asking for either true or false. If it's we leave it blank or enter true, it's going to be looking for an approximate match. So if we enter in an income amount here that doesn't match, the formula is still going to work for us. It's going to return the largest value that is less than or equal to the lookup value. So right now with 50,000, if I just quickly look up, it's going to look through the first vertical column here in our table. And then 50,000 is going to be between 37 and 91. So it's going to return, should return the value of 25%. All right, so we won't enter that in. We'll leave it blank like it does in the example and hit enter. Let's take a look at our result. Sure enough, like we expected, 50,000 has been our value that's been returned. So let's walk through it one more time mentally here. So what Excel is doing in this cell is it's looking at our lookup value, which is 50,000, and it's trying to find that number in the first column of our table. So it's looking in column nine, or excuse me, column C to find 50,000. Since it doesn't find 50,000, it's going to return and say the right row is the row that has the largest value that's not bigger than 50,000. Once it's found that value, it's then going to count four rows, columns to the right, excuse me. So, uh, so in, actually, it's going to go into column four. So here's column one, column two, column three, and column four. So it's counted over three more rows to the right and returned our tax rate of 25%. Let's try another value and see if it works here. Let's go up to 100,000. And as we've done that, it's come up with 
Again, going down 91,000 is our largest value without going over 100,000. And 28 is the result. Perfect. Let's move on to our next task. All right, so now we need to go on to our discount schedule worksheet. We'll click on that tab to move over to it. Now, this is going to be different in two ways. Uh, first off, this is going to be an H lookup instead of a V lookup. And second, we are going to actually fill in a range with lookup values rather than just a single cell. So let's start in cell D3, and we'll start with our H lookup function. All right, so the syntax is almost identical to what we used in the VLOOKUP. We need a lookup value. We need a table array. We need a row index number. So the only difference is that before we needed a column index. This time we need a row index. So in this case, what we're going to be looking up is the number of units ordered and trying to figure out what discount we, the customer is going to be eligible for. So here's our units ordered in column A. And here's our discount down here in a table at the bottom. Now, this table is running left to right, so that's why we're going to use an H lookup. So our lookup value is going to be A3. Our table array is going to be this table down here, B13 to G14. Now, in the last example, we used F4 in order to make this an absolute reference, just out of habit. In this case, we have to make sure that this is an absolute reference. If you do not have these dollar sign symbols in front of your letters and numbers of your cell reference, this formula will not work for you. Next, we need our index number. Well, in this case, it's going to always look in row 1. So it's going to try and find the value in row 1. And what we want it to do is return the value in row 2. So for this, we'll put 2. And we can keep this as true or leave it blank, whatever you're comfortable with. But it's not necessarily going to find the exact value. What we want it to do is find an, an approximate one. So we'll close this off with a parenthesis, hit enter, and we should get our first value of 40%. So let's just examine that and make sure that makes sense. Units ordered of 20. If I go down here, well, they have ordered more than 4, but less than 24. So the right discount value should be 40%. So that looks correct. Now what we're going to do is grab this box in the lower right-hand corner of our active cell. And we will drag that down to the bottom. I'm going to click in here and say, I only want to fill without the formatting. So I don't want to change how it looks. All right, so now we see, Again, 10, we'll test it here at the bottom. That's bigger than 4, less than 24. So yes, that should be 40%. Let's look at 1,000 here. Uh, so that is bigger than 499. So yes, that's going to be 50%. So it looks like everything works here. So now we've successfully completed this task. Just to give you an idea in, in an error that you might see, I'm going to change this from an absolute reference to a relative reference, just to show you what the difference is. So I'm going to select the same table as before. I'm just not going to F4 to make that absolute. I will hit enter. So right now, this looks exactly the same as what we saw before. But watch what happens when I fill this down. Okay, it worked once. Okay, and that's more coincidence than by purpose. But as soon as we go beyond that, all of a sudden we're returning all these pound NA errors. So if you happen to see that error in yours, uh, it could be the lack of relative or lack of absolute references in your table. Thanks for watching. Make sure you uh, subscribe so you know when we get the next video online. And I'll look forward to working with you through part two of the 3.2 practice tasks. Thanks for watching.